Hey yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Dino and you know what it is. We back with another video. Let's hop right into it. Really weird is the particular place that CERN was created. CERN itself was built below a old temple of Apollo which in ancient times was considered to be a portal to the underworld or CERN is partially situated it's called Saint Genes Poli excuse my French literally the name of Poli comes from the Latin Apollicum and it is believed that in Roman times a temple existed in honor of Apollo the people who lived there believe that it is a gateway to the underworld. It is interesting to note that CERN is built on the same spot. That's pretty wild. Like, I don't know what they're exactly doing with CERN. I know what they say they're doing, but that's pretty wild right there. There's no telling. Before we go on, I briefly wanted to mention a major warfare tactic that is being used in the information war right now by all sides and all players. And that concept is called gaslighting. Those of you who have been downloading our slides should recognize this from several days ago, but I've only found it prudent to verbally talk about right now. For instance, I pulled all of these graphics from various domestic abuse websites because that's how most people are aware of this psychological warfare tactic. If you take a moment to read these graphics, you might notice a lot of familiarity between these gaslighting tactics and pretty much everything that's been said by various political and social groups around the world over the past few years. Without getting too much into the weeds, we are seeing gaslighting and other similar psychological tactics being the primary weapons of very powerful people around the world, and this is becoming a significant problem for the Ukrainian war. Causing someone to doubt their own sanity and reality is certainly where we are at with regards to most of the events that are being talked about in the world today. Of course, a false tweet is not comparable at all to a grad strike, but those of us who are located outside of the combat zone and are trying to help people in the combat zone, the information war becomes the primary fight for us. And this is where we come to a standstill ourselves, because right now the misinformation that is out there is so thick that it's not possible to know what's going on with any reliability. For the most part, the theme for this brief is that there's a lot happening, but almost none of it is verifiable due to the blatant lies that are being told by all sides. Hmm. All right. Jeremy, I, I want to talk to you for a second. The, the Pentagon's UFO chief, this is a Pentagon guy, a UFO chief, the chairman of Harvard's astronomy department as well, both releasing a report on Tuesday where they wrote an artificial interstellar object could potentially be a parent craft that releases many small probes during its close passage to Earth. You've got the Pentagon talking about the idea of a, a mothership going above us and sending probes down. <laughs> okay. For the idea of a mothership that could come down and send down probes. <laughs> That's wild too. Oh man. What is this? What is this? Hold on. So you mean to tell me that the UK is preparing their citizens to go to war with Russia in this generation? This gen Do y'all not know that Gen Z is tired? We can't even get out of January of 2024. And we are already, well, they are already preparing to go to war. And the UK is a United States ally for those who don't know, right? So, with that being said, if they go to war, guess who's also going to try to get brought into the war? We will go to war if all the politicians seem like it's right. <laughs> And it's male and female, by the way. So if the male if all the politicians go to war, and all the millionaires and billionaires in this country go to war on the front lines, I will, I will stand in that line to go to war. Other than that, I can't go. I can't even go anyway. Because my mom said no. She said I gotta be back home now. So <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um Y'all have fun with that. Uh I know the UK citizens are not going either. The United States not going either. 
Um, so I don't know who's gonna be fighting who. Russia don't even got money to be funded to go to another war. How are they gonna go into another war if they don't even have money? Come on now. What's that? That was really cool looking, man. What is black noise? Black noise? Yeah. Black noise is um, something that Burroughs got very interested in. It's, it's um, yeah, intriguing. Well, no, it's it. the one facet of black noise is that um, everything, like a glass, if you, if an opera singer hits a particular note, the vibrations are out of the metabolism of the glass and it cracks it. Yeah? Yeah. So a black noise is the register within which you can crack a city or people or um, it's a, a new controlled bomb. It's a, a noise bomb, in fact, which can destroy. I mean, is, it, is, it, is, it a, is it a real it's thing? I mean, is it something that's actually oh, it is, yeah. it it was invented with? in France. Could a tyrant use it to... Uh... Well, it's until last year, you could buy the patent for it in the French patent office for about the um, equivalent of three, four dollars. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of it depends template. how much money you put into it. I mean, a small one could probably kill about half the people in, but a big one could destroy a city, or even more. I mean, this is a, it's a weird idea. Don't look at, that's not my idea. Yeah. Hmm. You said, don't look at me, it's not my idea. What in the hell living fuck is that? Oh my god, this is really cool I wonder what that was I mean at first it looked like some kind of like over zoomed little bubble thing or whatever but then it looked like something completely different that was pretty cool it has been spying on you for your entire life so none of this should come as any kind of surprise no I uh, I remember when I watched an MLK doc a few weeks ago I mean they've got fucking Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of hours of, of uh, taped phone calls. The Supreme Court was asked to rule on that, actually, uh, this week. They, they think that even though there's demonstrable evidence, this is the Supreme Court. Yeah. Even though there's demonstrable evidence that the uh, federal government has been spying on its people for decades, they think it's too dangerous for national security for us to investigate that. That's what oh, the Supreme yeah. Court just said today. Great. Great. So if you think any of this is fucking real, you're out of your goddamn mind. It's not. <laughs> the inventor of the earthquake bed must be imprisoned. At first glance, it appears like any ordinary bed, but in the event of a substantial earthquake, its high precision sensors detect vibrations triggering a swift response. Both the person and the mattress are smoothly lowered into a robust box, ensuring safety before potential house collapse. Crafted from high-strength alloy steel and supported by solid steel structures, the bed is impervious to harm from collapsing walls. 
The box's interior is well equipped, featuring ample supplies of food, water, firefighting tools, and medical provisions. Side vents eliminate concerns about oxygen deprivation. So how is this supposed to be safe, though? Against external fires. The bed can even transmit distress signals to facilitate prompt rescue efforts. The earthquake bed comes in various styles to cater to different preferences. Alongside the standard box design, there are lifting models, sliding models, double door open models, and even versions with gullwing doors reminiscent of cars. However, some consider this a trap amidst an earthquake locking you in. Considering these features, do you believe this earthquake bed has the potential to save lives in the midst of seismic events? I don't know, man. It kind of looks like a death trap or like a coffin with food in it. Just imagine what they do have, if that's what they're showing you. What kind of technologies are you talking about? We're looking at technologies that are not the same as ours. Yes. And that's yes. partly that's why archaeologists can't see them, because they're looking for us in the past, and they're not open to the possibility that there are whole other kinds of technology that could be used. Right. I always go back to the ancient Egyptian traditions that speak of priests chanting as these huge blocks were lifted into the air. Were they using some kind of sound uh, effect, some kind of use of sound that was able to manipulate matter? We know that sound can manipulate matter, as a matter of fact, but they're lifting these blocks it's again and again, it appears in the different traditions. The notion that we could lift huge blocks with sound seems absurd to archaeologists, and yet it's there in the traditions of the Egyptologists. Interesting. The creepiest science experiments of all time, part two. First, in one of the most disturbing experiments, Leo Stanley, the doctor in charge at San Quentin Prison, surgically transplanted the testicles of executed criminals into living inmates. More than 600 inmates became the victim of his experiment, and the worst part is that when there was a shortage of human testicles, he went on to inject liquefied animal testicles into his prisoners. This is just sick. No. He did what now? Biotechnologies <laughs> developed a goat that had milk containing proteins of spider silk. The milk can then be refined into super strong biosteel polymers. We really just crossbreeded spiders with goats. Moving on, Nikola Tesla was working on a peace ray that would use a particle beam that could potentially bring down 10,000 airplanes at 200 miles an hour. He tried to sell the weapon, but all military said no. Imagine your death ray is too terrifying for the US military. Finally, scientists have discovered that tissue from pig bladders can be used to regrow human fingers. While typically mammals heal injuries from growing scar tissues, the cells of the powder contain a protein that stimulates a total regrowth of tissue. This just doesn't feel right. No, that doesn't feel right. There's just some weird things right there that he was mentioning. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in. And that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. Wait, not that guy. This guy. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. Yo, if y'all haven't watched that with Cat, you need to go watch that whole thing. Just, just do it. <laughs> He's spitting so much crazy stuff. I like it, it. It might very well be true. I don't know. I took it on the dare. And you see this Mark Zuckerberg building this two hundred and seventy million dollar bunker. What he building a two hundred seventy million dollar bunker? What do you know that we don't know, Cat? 
Kim Jong Un. <laughs> what? I don't know what you don't know. Do you understand that people that are not very bright are in charge of nuclear bombs all across the country? Mm -hmm. That's what he knows. He knows that 30% of all weapon systems are running off regular Wi-Fi. So what does that mean? That means if a solar flare or a meteor hits either one of those, literally a bomb can go off just because the system accidentally got turned off. Yeah, that's what he knows. The, the people that are in power know that the people that are running the most complicated and deadliest things on the planet are just an average idiot. The spiritual truth about alcohol that they don't want you to know. I recommend you watch this one all the way through because there's a lot you don't know about. Of course, they're not going to teach you this in school because they don't teach you anything in school. All right, so we've all had a run-in with this guy at one point in our lives, unless you're under the age of 21. I myself have been there more than once. In fact, I built an entire brand around it so I wouldn't have to justify myself, but that's another story. I don't do it anymore because it ruined my life and I hate how I feel. So what is this demonic substance? Well, al cool is the Arabic word that it's derived. It means body eating spirit. And when we consume a high amount of it, it's basically extracting the soul essence out of our body. That's why it becomes demon time. In fact, we get so toxic inside our soul says, peace. This is why a blackout happens. It numbs you and lowers your vibration. This keeps you trapped. As always, follow the money. Wow, wow, wow. What do you think about that? Oh, that's a whole bunch of cool pictures and stuff there. I wonder if it really is technology or if it's just like, you know, pictures, paintings, uh, statues, just things made kind of like we do for art. Prince, the famous rock star that was a friend of mine. Do you know why he called himself the artist when he came back? He calls himself the artist because that's what they call us in our contracts. Oh, these contracts are crazy. You should hear the terminology they say in these contracts. To use your name and likeness and perpetuity throughout the universe. Who the fuck could possibly know what that means? Mm -hmm. Nobody does. Do you agree with what he is saying? Could there be a darker side to these contracts that these artists sign, or is Dave Chappelle making it up? TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. It's so complicated, in fact, that when you're a kid like me, you have to hire somebody to tell you what that means. And you sit down at a table, and you do the contract game. And that's how I got with Comedy Central. I signed a contract. But I signed the contract the way the 28 year old expecting father that was broke signs a contract. I was desperate, I needed a way out, and it wasn't good money, and it wasn't good circumstances, but uh, what else am I gonna do, I said. And all these white people sitting at that table told me, trust this day, it's a good contract. And I looked around the table and they all seemed to agree it was a good contract. But what if? What if it was like that game of three card Monty? What if they were all friends and I didn't know it? It's 
wild to think about. You know, I really like Dave Chappelle. He disappeared for a long time and then came back saying some crazy stuff. Check this out, y'all. Can you guess where this is at? Yep. This is Florida. What is this, y'all? Now, it gets better. It gets even better than this. Look at this. I'm going to zoom in. And just look how big this thing gets. What the fuck? What is that? Do y'all see some type of light emanating off of that and projecting it? What is going on right now? Do you guys see that? Look at this. Look at that. It's like a jellyfish. Disappears. Do you see that one? So like, I'm not sure, but like, I would say it was a rocket going up and splitting apart and all that. You know, the things that happen when you launch a rocket. Uh, but that was crazy looking. Spheres in the heavens. The experts have devised them in the imagination so it was easier to understand their movements. So what's that mean? Well, it means stars are not distant. Guilty of a cover-up, the likes of which has never been seen in human history. Everything, and I mean everything that we were taught about space, about the planets, about the orbits, is a hoax. It's a lie. It means our entire idea of the cosmos isn't just wrong, it's very wrong. Astronomically wrong. So, any scientists, any physicists out there going to do anything? Or is the scientific community just going to sit there and do nothing? You guys are really just making it harder for the truth to come out by protecting these frauds and the liars that deceived all of us. Mm, 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 mm. This platform to your advantage. There is so much leaked information on TikTok that they do not want people to find out about. Why do you think TikTok's being attacked so much and trying to get shut down by all these different companies and politicians and all the people that probably don't want you to find out about the truth? I want you guys to search NASA fake footage on TikTok. Just see what comes up. There's videos that will blow your mind. And so once you realize that NASA is a complete hoax and that we've never been to space, it will then start to make you question everything. Because then you'll think, well, if they're lying about the moon and they're lying about the earth, what else could they be lying about? And that's where it all begins, my friends. That's how you're going to wake up and become more aware of what the fuck is going on in this world we live in. This globe. <laughs> It's not even real. They film everything in pools, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> they film everything in underwater pools with the green screen effect. Just go look. Go do your research. You'll see the glasses of the atmosphere. Does it make sense? By the way, whoever this is that said this, the round glass is called atmosphere. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> it doesn't even make fucking sense. The astonishing thing is the, the so-called Pinkerton world map drawn, I think, in 1813, based on the latest exploration data at that time. And it just shows a hole where Antarctica is. Mm. Yeah. Nobody right. found it by then. But if you go back to the Orontius Phineas map drawn in the 1500s, you find Antarctica is present. Now, what the fuck is it doing on a map drawn in the 1500s when nobody knew it existed in the 1500s? To me, the obvious answer is we are dealing with the fingerprints of the lost civilization that mapped the world. Most and likely. left evidence of that mapping. We have evidence that somebody, unrecognized by archaeology, had the capacity to explore the world and to map the world during the last ice age. Most likely. You've probably heard the term psychological warfare. In 1984, Yuri Bezmenov, a KGB defector, sat down in an interview and dropped this nugget. Check this out. Ideological subversion is, is the slow process of psychological warfare to change the perception of reality of every 
American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community and their country. It's a great brainwashing process, uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. Exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, he will refuse to believe it. I want to know what you guys think about this. Drop your comment down below. Y'all think what he was saying is true or not? That's pretty crazy to think about. Like, what if he's right? It is the video of an unidentified object that is sparking debate and curiosity. No one can say for sure what exactly this is. And now for the first time, we're hearing from a Marine veteran who says he served on the base where the video was taken in Iraq. Did you think when you watched it for the first time that like it could be, you know, non-human? It crossed my mind because the theories that we had like I said, didn't, didn't fully explain it. Michael Sinkowski was an intelligence surveillance reconnaissance tactical controller at the base in Iraq. He says the video was captured in 2017 and shown to him by colleagues when he arrived in 2018. Marines nicknamed the object the Spaghetti Monster. When they started seeing it on the camera, they were watching it to make sure that it wasn't a threat. They kept an eye out, but it, it wasn't like we were scrambling to our defensive positions or anything like that. It was just a, a big unknown. The spaghetti <laughs> object. That's pretty wild, man. What? I don't know. Seems like it might be some sort of like high tech military thing or something. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Could be fake as well. Who knows? I believe we relate, but go ahead. You were originally supposed to play Cat Williams' character. Yes. And Cat Williams was supposed to play yeah. my character. And somebody said, no, we want you to play Mike. The uh, thieving ass Mike. Santa Claus. Right. And then, <laughs> yeah, because Cat Williams was going to be the Santa Claus. Right. And then, uh, and they switched it over. Right. Because I, when I auditioned, I auditioned 
for Mighty Mike. Right. You know, so when I went in there to audition, I'm at the toilet. Uh, when, when Cat Williams right. went, went to use the bathroom, right. that was, that was, that's the line I had to use to audition. So they switched it up. So I was like, yeah, I can do this Santa Claus role, uh, Friday, uh, you know, and, but I didn't know that because I did my role like in four days. Right. They shot all my stuff in four days. I went back to Birmingham. Came back out because they changed the ending. Did you right. know that? Right. No, I didn't. No, you know the ending where they got the fighting or right. whatever. The ending was me giving out Santa Claus giving out presents to his kids. Right. So the the test audience didn't like the way it ended, so right. they changed the ending. Right. So I had to come back. The scariest thing was laying down in front of that limousine. Right. And- oh no, man! I think he's capping. What do y'all think? During his exploration in an abandoned building, this YouTuber is stopped in his tracks when he hears that there is someone else in a room just ahead of him. Take a look at what happens next. So close, right? Luckily, he managed to get out alive. Do I even have to say anything? Research facility in El Paso on the Mexican American border. And this was a place where they were doing these sort of technologies that are transdimensional but medical applications major stuff, technologies that literally, electromagnetic trans-dimensional technologies where they can, if someone had a missing limb, they can attach to the subtle body, you know, the, the mystics call astral body, but that energy, like you have phantom pain, and regrow it. And here's the issue. The same technology that gives you that would give you free energy to run your house because it's in that same, let's call it constellation of extraordinary technologies that they would want to keep secret. So there are a lot of spin-offs beyond energy propulsion in the environment that will benefit humanity once we can get the first level of this out. Because it, it, it's unbelievable how backward uh, even our medical technology is compared to what's possible. So that's also a very bit of good news. This is why I've called for um, sort of a uh, Marshall Plan for the planet, for new energy in the environment, that is supported and funded by individuals in an open source way, and not expecting. I think it's you know silly to expect the government of the United States or any other government to get behind doing something that brings out the most disruptive technologies in the history of the human race. Let's be blunt, but it also creates a new civilization, and it saves our future. So if it, this had been introduced slowly from the early 20th century, 100 years ago to now, we'd be okay. But now we've run out of time because of what's happening to the biosphere, geopolitically, population boom. So in order to create uh, you know, enough change quickly enough, we're gonna have to do something very different, very uh, fundamentally different than what we've been doing. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Um, we do need to do something very different than what we've fundamentally been doing. 
The modern world is made up of people who are enslaved to their own passions. And this is by design because we're dealing with something called psychological warfare. And psychology is actually divided up into two words. The first word is the Greek word for soul. Ology is the study of. Psychology is the study of the soul. And psychological warfare is a battle of the soul. Modern warfare is psychological warfare. And the battle that is being waged is a battle for your soul. Yeah. I agree. Have you ever heard of psychological warfare? Psychological warfare is a military tactic and it's real. Supported by military, economic, and political measures, it involves the planned use of propaganda and other psychological operations to influence the opinions, emotions, attitudes, and behaviors of an opposition group. Also, actions taken to reduce the opponent's morale or morality. Tactics include fear, intimidation, deception, and surprise. Psychological war is an invisible war, a war for your heart and mind, aka your soul. It's used to make the opponent feel powerless to change the things around them and incapable of breaking free from the imaginary chain. And the biggest propagator of propaganda or psyop is the media. By bombarding us with negative news stories to destroy the faith and morale of society, causing us to focus on fear, hate, anger, and lack, leaving us feeling weak and powerless. Side note, calling the seven days of creation the seven days of the week is psychological warfare. Weak is the opposite of strong. So try having a strong beginning instead of a weak end. But back to the breakdown. And by buying into the negative narratives, we give them all of our power, and they use our own power against us. For instance, in the movie The Wizard of Oz, the characters believed that the wizard was all-powerful and that he had control over whether they got what they wanted or not. But in reality, the wizard was nowhere near as powerful as they once believed. The wizard was just a man, and they had all the power that they needed within themselves. So how do we protect ourselves from an invisible war? Invisible wars are spiritual wars, and spiritual wars call for spiritual armor. So believe none of what you hear, and only half of what you see. Stay illuminated. Stay illuminated. It's true though, you should only believe half of what you see. This is not going to be a race between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I would bet my beloved fishing camp in Maine that that is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So what will happen? Well, I don't know. One of like 400 distinct other possibilities. I mean, I just can't even, you know, pick one. By the way, if it's Gavin Newsom, we all should be very, very concerned. That guy's scary and I mean it. I mean it. It's scary. Yeah, but that's a whole separate conversation. But the point is, this is, this will be forced these issues will be forced soon, like in a year. Mm. And the road from here to November of 2024 is going to be filled with developments nobody in this room could foresee. I can promise you that. So it's about to get very serious, uh, for sure. This you know, only leadership of the world at stake, which is also, by the way, we now know the most lucrative possible political franchise in human history. So everything's the same. What wouldn't they do? What haven't they done? What might they do next? Let your imagination run wild. So the question, the only one that you can answer is, how will you prepare yourself for that? And because that really is the only question. And, and I mean, I just my, my answers to that in my own life, I'll tell you what I think. One, be a little bit more serious. You know, like, take this seriously. Much as you want to retreat and pretend everything is fine, sit down. It's not fine, okay? Tucker Carlson, always going off every time he's talking, man. What in the world? What? Okay.
Yeah, I've seen a couple of those, but uh, the first one was crazy. International fake station. <laughs> Globalist Hi. wake up. Good afternoon, all the students on Earth. I'm Jai Zhigang, I'm the commander. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Ye Guangfu. The standard cup will not work in a weightless environment. You know, the cup that we're all used to drinking. Oh, oh this, yeah, a standard cup like this does not work in a weightless environment. It requires gravity to hold the food in the bottom of the cup. Uh-oh. Fake station seems very level floating in space, not even a little lean. No, yeah, that is pretty weird, isn't it? In 1997, hundreds of people in Mexico, Nevada, and Arizona looked up and saw something strange in the night sky. They saw the Phoenix lights. It appeared to be in a V-shape and was lined with five extremely bright lights. The wingspan was estimated to be 1,500 feet long. That's five football fields. Just for comparison, the wingspan of a Boeing 747 airplane is only 211 feet. This thing was huge. It hovered there for three hours until the lights slowly faded out one by one. There was no sign of it in the morning. Despite so many people witnessing the event, it didn't garner much news coverage at the time. However, Phoenix did become a destination for UFO hunters. And they weren't disappointed either. The Phoenix lights did return in 2007 to 2008. Was there something otherworldly up there? Or was it a secret government aircraft? What do you think? Thanks for watching and check out our page for more Night Files. The Phoenix lights are definitely a thing. Um, I believe we saw a clip in a previous video covering them a little bit. But no, when I was out in Arizona, I saw some wild stuff out there and people just told me to shrug it off. So, I don't know. Imagine being so scared of police that you freeze to death. Brandon Bushman was a 34-year-old man living in Minnesota. On June the 26th, 2023, something horrific was revealed. Police responded to a call asking them to attend a property that hadn't been lived in since around February 2023. Just after 3.30 p.m., police found Brandon's body inside of a chest freezer in the property. Now, witnesses had seen police in the local area and spotted Brandon run from the upstairs of the house. It's believed that he had a warrant outstanding for his arrest, and it's believed he was trying to evade police. In doing so, he ran to the freezer of the property, presumably hoping to hide there for a short amount of time. That's not a good idea. However, after climbing into the basement freezer by choice, Tragically, due to it being an older model of a freezer, it had no facility to be opened from the inside. It had a latching mechanism on the outside of the freezer only. Tragically, Brandon was trapped. He couldn't escape the freezer. He was found deceased and the autopsy showed no evidence of him having any prior injuries or trauma to his body. That's wild, man. Can you imagine, like, getting trapped inside of a freezer, like a deep freezer? That's wild, dude. No, 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 no. This is one of the most disturbing diseases known to mankind. Stone man's disease causes muscles and tendons to literally become bone. Surgeries are to be avoided urgently, as more bones also develop from scars. At some point, you'll have to decide in which posture you want to spend the rest of your life, sitting or laying down. At some point, the bones are fused together and can no longer move. Eventually, the lungs can no longer develop due to the stiffening of the ribcage. There is no treatment. That's pretty terrifying. It sucks. We're given a photo with the airships in the background in the sky. So I went digging and found this photo from 1905, World's Fair in Oregon, showing more airships. And since I haven't really covered this topic yet on this channel, in my opinion, and a few others, this form of travel was all over the place. It wasn't just created in the 1800s, and the Hindenburg event was used as a scare tactic to make these airships look faulty, removing this free energy form of transportation technology out of our lives. Do you really think that they put a gas in these airships that would be so incredibly flammable 
and fly them over massive cities? Or does it make more sense that this Hindenburg event was a planned event to get rid of this free form of travel and wipe it from the history books? Here we have a photo of one of these airships sitting in between the two spires of the old world building. You can see that they use these spires to electrically charge these airships. And this was common knowledge. And in the very next photo, it's leaving the port. We are not given the truth about our history. This isn't something that we are ever told about in our mainstream schooling system all over the world. Do you find that odd? Let's keep digging. We see that the US Army had this technology in the 1800s, as well as the Navy. Now, this is a photo from July of 1931, and we clearly have an airship charging at the top of this building. So we have a lot going on here. And this was within the last 100 years, an airship charging at the top of this tower. Did you think they only charged at the top of buildings? Of course not. They had charging docks in the middle of the water. Here we have a photo of the US Navy airship in 1924, charging from this boat. Now let's zoom in on this charging station to get a good look at what's going on here. Now this is a technology that we were never told about. This is hidden from our timeline. A clear proof that there is much more to the story than what we've been told, especially since this was not thousands of years ago and shows how easily history can be rewritten. This technology should be common knowledge at this point. Here we have another angle in Rhode Island of the charging taking place. These airships were not powered by gas or simply helium. And if we switch angles here, we can actually see the charging tool that was used right at the top of this tower. They're clearly about to connect to the airship. So this, in my opinion, is clearly explaining what's going on at the top of these old world buildings. They were charging stations for the airships. They have the same features, and I guarantee you that they still turn on, since this was not that long ago. And I'm gonna take this time right now to answer a lot of people's questions. Will we ever find the truth? As we keep uncovering more and more documented evidence, we're gonna find that the previous civilization was not that far in the past, and our current structures hold so much more technology than we ever truly understood. So in my opinion, Yes, we are gonna find the truth about all of this. We are uncovering the truth faster and faster. And this community gets bigger and bigger with more and more people sharing their thoughts and knowledge. The mainstream history is becoming comedy hour at this point. So we can clearly see that these buildings all around the world may have had a second purpose, but they were without a doubt here to generate free energy, specifically for airships. And once you realize this, then we can go deeper and ask the question, was the previous civilization capable of using these buildings to power their flight that were so much more powerful, so much faster, and so much more incredible than an airship? I believe that they fully understood this technology. They were the ones that constructed it. They had this technology and were able to travel through the air so much faster than we can today while using the Earth's natural energy. These buildings are technology. They are able to extract the energy and are able to turn it into a fuel. If you're looking for a why, a motive to suppress this technology, well, it would 100% benefit a civilization, us. It's free. There is zero benefit to free transportation, free energy. Do we need to go further for the why? So when you go around your town now, and see the top of these buildings, we can all understand how popular this form of transportation really was. It was everywhere. All right. So what do you guys think about what he's saying? Do you think we had airships and free forms of transportation that charged on the top of our old buildings and that that's old world technology that was suppressed and taken away uh, with an event that was basically just propaganda. I don't know. Not supposed to get into the cookie jar. Drugs. Wow, that is terrifying. 
Anyways, that's all I got for today. Thanks for stopping through. I hope everyone's doing well, and I hope you have a great rest of your morning, day, afternoon, evening, whatever it may be for you. And uh, do me a favor. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and also tick that notification bell so that whenever I post one of these videos, you get informed. Peace.